Hello, my name is Larry Cohen. I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist in Washington, D.C. I specialize in helping people suffering from social anxiety and related problems. I co-founded and co-chair the National Social Anxiety Center, which is a network of many regional clinics around the United States, all dedicated to providing and fostering effective evidence-based services for people with social anxiety. Since 1990, I've directed the Social Anxiety Help Clinic here in Washington, D.C., where we've helped more than a thousand people with social anxiety in both group and individual cognitive behavioral therapy. This session is about learning to change the negative self-images and self-impressions we have, which reinforce our social anxiety. This is a more advanced session, and you will get more out of it if you've already watched and done the exercises suggested in the three-part series that I did on external mindfulness for social anxiety. Research shows that people who suffer from social anxiety have very strong negative self-images and self-impressions when they are experiencing anxiety during an interaction. In other words, we see ourselves in our mind's eye or in our mental ideas as coming across very badly and as others reacting to us very badly. These negative self-images and impressions are not just unpleasant, they have a very strong impact in a number of ways. First of all, they make us feel more anxious and possibly also embarrassed and depressed and full of shame. These negative self-images also have a self-fulfilling prophecy effect. They fuel a vicious cycle. For one thing, they lead to various self-defeating, safety-seeking behaviors, crutches that we lean on because of our anxiety, because of our negative images. First and foremost, the safety behavior of internal mental focus, self-monitoring, paying attention to our thoughts, our feelings, our symptoms, trying to script what we're going to say, trying to control how we're going to appear. All those things in an effort to try to come across better, but they only make us more anxious and less natural. They distract us from the conversation and make the conversation go worse. These negative self-images and impression also lead to other safety-seeking behaviors, such as avoidance. We might simply not engage in various interactions because we imagine in our mind that they're going to go poorly. Or if we do engage in these interactions, we use more covert forms of avoidance, such as not initiating conversation with new people, not joining group conversations already in progress, saying very little during conversation, just listening rather than speaking, asking a lot of questions to keep the attention off of ourselves. Various safety-seeking behaviors, various crutches that we lean on because of our negative self-images that only make us more anxious, more distracted, and negatively impact how the conversation or other interaction goes. But the problem with negative self-images doesn't stop there. Besides making us feel more anxious, depressed, embarrassed, ashamed, besides distracting us and messing up our conversations and other interactions, the negative self-images negatively impact our learning. After an interaction, the negative self-images lead us to ruminate about what we think went wrong during the interaction. We rehash it over and over in our minds, feeling terrible as we do. We don't pay any attention to the positive parts of the interaction, or if we've noticed them at all, we disqualify them as somehow being lucky or the other person being nice or for some other reason not counting. And we ruminate about the negative things so that they feel much bigger than they really were. The result of all this is not only a lot more suffering, 
The result is also that we set ourselves up to feel less self-confident and more socially anxious at the next interaction. So as you can see, negative self-images and negative self-impressions have a terrible impact on us and an important part of cognitive behavioral therapy for social anxiety is learning various strategies to change our negative self-images and impressions. Now you've noticed along the way that I've been using the words both images and impressions. That's because people think in different ways. Some people have very vivid pictures going through their minds, images of how they come across and how others react to them. Not all of us think in pictures, at least not all of the time. Some of us think more in ideas or words going through our mind, more so than pictures. We call these self-impressions. Either way, whether we have images or impressions or a combination of both, they impact the way we feel, the way we behave, the way our interactions go, and what we learn from them. Where do these negative self-images and impressions come from? We learn them through very painful memories of traumatic social interaction experiences earlier in our lives. It could go back to early childhood, or certainly at least adolescence, for some of us not until young adulthood. But we've all experienced upsetting experiences, perhaps emotionally traumatic experiences, in which we were humiliated, teased, bullied, mocked, embarrassed, rejected, excluded, disliked, experiences that hurt us very much and shaped our view of ourselves and our view of how others perceive us. These memories are reinforced every time they come up again in later life experiences through these negative self images and impressions. Each time these images come up, filled with negative emotion, they are strengthened in our mind. So it becomes a vicious cycle, a self-reinforcing pattern. And it's important to learn how to break that cycle. In this session, you'll learn a couple strategies to do just that. The first step is learning what your negative self-image is and self-impressions are. So what I'd like you to do initially is to imagine yourself in this personal movie theater in which only you are there and you're looking at this screen and you see a movie, a video of scenes from your life in the present day when you are experiencing much social anxiety. You may find it effective to keep your eyes open or perhaps more effective to have your eyes closed. Either way, choose one or two scenes of situations in your present day life in which you experience much social anxiety. And pay attention to what you see and your feelings. If you are not a thinker in images, then narrate the scene in your mind in great detail and notice the feelings that arise. Take your time and pay attention to what you are experiencing and what you are feeling in the present day scenes in which you are triggered with social anxiety.
Welcome back. This may have been a difficult exercise for you. It may have brought up negative feelings. What were the images that came up for you? What did you see? What did you imagine? What impression did you have in your mind of how you come across and how others relate to you? If your scene was a social interaction of some sort, maybe mingling in a party or a meetup or talking to an attractive stranger, perhaps you saw yourself looking very awkward and anxious, being very jittery or your voice shaking or blushing or sweating profusely, that you're sounding very boring and that people are turned off by you. Perhaps they're laughing at you or grimacing at you or rolling their eyes at you or turning to their friends and whispering about you. Or perhaps you had a scene of speaking up in a group or of asserting yourself with somebody, and you imagine yourself coming across with low self-confidence and others reacting to you as though you don't know what you're talking about, or that you can't be taken seriously, or that they don't respect what you have to say. These are examples of negative self-images and self-impressions that come up when we are socially anxious. Now I'd like you to think about the earliest experience that you can recall in which you experienced this self-image or self-impression. Perhaps this goes way back to childhood or adolescence or college or other periods in young adulthood. Think of the earliest experience you had in which you felt you came across in the same way that you identified in these present day negative self images and impressions. Imagine yourself back in this private movie theater, either with your eyes open or closed, whichever you prefer. And remember in vivid detail that experience, that early memory of experiencing that negative self-image, that negative self-impression. If you think in pictures, pay close attention to what you see and also what you feel. Otherwise, narrate the scene in detail and pay attention to all that you experience and feel. Welcome back. Was this difficult for you? What feelings did it trigger? What was your memory? How does it relate to the negative self images and self impressions that come to mind today when you experience social anxiety?
Now that you've identified the negative self-images and impressions that you experience when you are socially anxious in the present day, as well as the painful memories that created these images many years ago, I will guide you through two exercises, two strategies, to help you break the link between these negative self-images and your present-day experiences. They will help you gradually change these self-images so that you are experiencing more self-confidence and less social anxiety. This first strategy I call confident self-imagery. What I'd like you to do is to choose a situation in the present day in which you experience social anxiety and that you would like to work on in the near future. Perhaps it's attending a social activity where you don't know everyone and you're interacting with new people there. Perhaps it's talking to an, a stranger that you find to be attractive. Perhaps it's calling a friend or an acquaintance to initiate a phone conversation. Perhaps it's speaking up at a staff meeting at greater length than you normally would, or giving a presentation to a meeting at work. Perhaps it's asserting yourself with someone with whom you disagree or doing various activities in which there are many strangers around who could be observing you while you're doing those activities. Choose the situation that you would like to focus on and decide before we do imagery how you would like to handle that situation if you are more self-confident. Self-confidence means believing in yourself, believing in your abilities. Self-confidence is essentially the opposite of social anxiety. It's really a continuum. So on one end of the continuum is social anxiety or low self-confidence. On the other end of the continuum is high self-confidence and low social anxiety. So think through how you would like to handle the situation you chose if you were more self-confident, if you believed more in yourself and in your abilities. You're not necessarily confident of how others will react to you. We don't know that until it happens, but you believe in yourself and in your abilities. Don't script what you're gonna say Scripting is a self-defeating safety behavior. Instead, just think through what you would do in this situation, how you would handle it if you were more self-confident. For example, if it's a mingling social activity, you might imagine that you would walk up to individuals you don't know and introduce yourself and start a conversation in which you actively engage. Or you might imagine that you join small group conversations of strangers who are already talking and participate actively in conversation with them. Or you might imagine talking to a person you are attracted to and perhaps sharing contact information and inviting that person out. Or you might imagine speaking up more at a staff meeting when you have opinions or other things to say or giving a presentation with a sense of self-confidence, knowing that you have some important information you want to share, or asserting your opinions and feelings to somebody with whom you disagree. So choose the situation that you want to work on and think ahead of how you would like to handle it with greater self-confidence. Now imagine yourself back in that private movie theater. And again, either with your eyes open or closed, whichever you prefer. Imagine yourself in that scene that you chose, handling it with greater self-confidence. If you see pictures in your mind's eye, notice in vivid detail 
what you see, what you experience, and what you feel. If you don't see pictures in your mind's eye, then narrate in detail what you are experiencing and notice what you are feeling. Repeat the image a few times in your mind, increasing your self-confidence and decreasing your social anxiety each time. Remember, you're not scripting what you would say. You're just imagining yourself handling these challenging situations with self-confidence. Enjoy. Welcome back. How did that go for you? Was it challenging? Most people find this quite challenging the first few times they practice. So you'll need to practice this often, but gradually it will help you feel more confident in your mind's eye, more confident about the situation that you're going to later do in real life. Now this was step one. You're imagining how you are handling a situation that presumably goes reasonably well. Most of the time, these interactions do go reasonably well, so long as we're focused mindfully. We're paying attention to what's actually going on in the situation, rather than paying attention to our thoughts, feelings, images. However, that's not always the case. Sometimes our fears do come true. Sometimes people do react to us negatively. Sometimes we do say stupid things. We put our foot in our mouths or we make a bad impression somehow. I don't think this happens that often, but it does sometimes happen. 
So it's important to do a second level of confident self-imagery in which we are imagining handling a situation that isn't going well with a sense of self-confidence too. So what I'd like you to do now is to think ahead before we do imagery about the situation that you've already worked on in imagery. And now think about what does your fear come true? What are you afraid would happen? Maybe it's that someone would laugh at you or roll their eyes at you or that you might say something stupid or that they would show no interest in talking to you. They might even insult you. Whatever it is you fear, identify that and we will imagine how you would handle that with a sense of self-confidence. Now think ahead of how you would like to handle that with a sense of self-confidence. What would you do in reaction to that? Would you say something to assert yourself? Would you excuse yourself? and go talk to somebody else who might be friendlier. Think ahead of how you would handle the situation with a sense of self-confidence if your fear did come true. What would you say? What would you do? Now imagine yourself back in that private movie theater And either with your eyes open or closed, whichever you find more effective, imagine yourself back in that scene, that situation that you chose and worked on earlier. Only this time, imagine that one or more of your fears comes true. And imagine yourself handling that difficult situation with self-confidence not taking it personally, moving on from it, and perhaps talking to other people. If you see in pictures, pay close attention to the images in your mind's eye and notice all that you see and all that you feel. Otherwise, narrate in detail what you are experiencing and notice that and what you feel as well. Repeat the scene a few times in your mind, increasing your self-confidence and decreasing your social anxiety each time.
Welcome back. That was pretty challenging, huh? How did it feel for you? How did it go for you? How did you handle your fear coming true? How do you feel about the way you handled it? Did you have a sense of self-confidence in the face of this difficult situation? Were you able to not take it personally and move on? Did your self-confidence increase as you repeated the scene? Just like the earlier step when you were imagining the situation going reasonably well, this will take a lot of practice, but with practice you will feel increasingly self-confident. So this is what I suggest for you as homework. Ideally every day, ideally for at least five minutes, perhaps longer, do self-confident imagery at both these levels. Choose a situation that you would like to work on that triggers your social anxiety in the present and that you would like to tackle in real life in the near future. And then at level one, imagine yourself handling that situation with self-confidence and the situation goes reasonably well. And at level two, Imagine yourself handling a situation in which one or more of your fears come true and you handling those difficult situations well, too. Repeat those scenes over and over in your mind until you experience increased self-confidence and decreased social anxiety as you go. Ideally, practice this every day and then carry out this exercise in real life as an experiment. So if you are imagining handling a social interaction, a social phone call, a work meeting, an assertion, then go out and do that very thing in real life after you've been practicing confident self-imagery of this for a while. When you're doing your real life social anxiety experiments, make sure you get out of your head and into the moment. In other words, focus mindfully, externally, with curiosity, taking interest in the conversation, the person, any other activity in the moment, while you diffuse, detach, distance from any disturbing images, impressions, other thoughts or feelings you may be having. Treat everything going on inside of your head as unimportant background noise as you return your attention with curiosity to what's going on outside of your head in the moment. If you haven't already, you'll find it helpful to view and to do the exercises in the three-part series I have on external mindfulness and curiosity training. In this next set of exercises, I will guide you in the use of a strategy to help you sever the link between the painful memories that helped create these negative self-images and impressions and your present-day experiences when you have social anxiety. The first step is to recall the painful memory. And so I need to take you through that again. So imagine yourself back in the private movie theater and choose whether to keep your eyes open or have them closed, whichever you think is more effective. And remember those early experiences which created the negative self-images and self-impressions that you have when you are socially anxious today. If you see pictures in your mind's eye, then pay close attention to them and what you're experiencing and feeling. Otherwise, narrate in your mind what is happening and pay attention to that and to your feelings.
Welcome back. Now we're going to learn how the experience then is actually very different than our experience now. Take something to write with, whether it's paper or something electronic, and divide that page or screen into two sections, one labeled then, the other labeled now. In the then section, I'd like you to create a list of the ways that you and others were in that memory that you experienced, which created the negative self images and impressions you have when you are socially anxious today. Start with basic things like listing how old you were, what your occupation was. Maybe you were a third grade student or a high school senior or a college freshman. What was the situation you were experiencing? Perhaps you were in a classroom. Perhaps this was during recess. Perhaps you were walking in the hallway or down the stairs between classes. Perhaps you were in the lunchroom, the cafeteria, or the gymnasium. Note what the situation was. Note what happened. Note how you handled it and note how others reacted to you. All of these would be a list of details in the then section. Now I'd like you to think about recent social anxiety experiments you've conducted. Perhaps you went to a meetup or some other social activity. Perhaps you made conversation with a coworker that you normally don't talk to much or called a friend or an acquaintance that you normally wouldn't call. Perhaps you went out on a date or a get together with a friend that you don't normally see much. Perhaps you spoke up in a staff meeting or gave a presentation or asserted yourself with someone with whom you disagree. Remember, hopefully, a few recent experiments you've conducted. If you haven't conducted any social anxiety experiments yet, then you will want to probably put off this exercise until after you've done so using the first strategy described in this session, confident self-imagery, followed by doing experiments. But for those of you who have, what I'd like you to do now is list the ways that things are different now during these recent experiments versus then during that painful memory that helped create the negative self-images in the first place. Start with the basic things. How old are you now? How old are the other people there? What is your occupation now? What is the situation you are in now versus then? What happened now? How did you handle it? And how did people react to you? So you have a corresponding list in the then section and the now section. I'd like you to silently read those two lists so you can note the contrast. Notice how things are different now than then. That's especially true when we do experiments in which we are not relying on safety behaviors, in which we are not leaning on our crutches, but instead we are focused mindfully with interest on the conversation, the activity, the person in the moment, 
and we're diffusing, detaching from our negative self images and other thoughts and feelings that we may be having. For homework, what I'd like you to do is to continue doing social anxiety experiments for which you prepare using confident self-imagery described earlier in this session. And then during the experiment, pay mindful attention to the ways things are different now than then. Pay close attention to what people are saying and doing in the present moment and diffuse from any images, feelings, or other thoughts you may be having. And after the experiment, after the situation is over, and before the day is out so you remember it well, go back to this then versus now list and add to the now page the ways in which this experience was different than what you experienced back then during the painful memory. Do that every time you conduct a social anxiety experiment. Do it also if you experience some other socially anxious interaction that you didn't plan for. Afterwards, note how things are different now than then. Remember, as you do these experiments, they will go better if instead of leaning on your crutches, instead of using your safety-seeking behaviors, instead of focusing on your thoughts and feelings and images, you focus mindfully on the person, the conversation, the activity and the moment. With practice, this will help you build self-confidence and lessen your social anxiety. But be patient with yourself. It took a long time and painful experiences to deepen these negative self-images and self-impressions. It'll take considerable practice over a period of weeks and perhaps months to help you build considerable self-confidence and greatly decrease your social anxiety but I'm confident you'll be able to do so. Enjoy the process. Thank you.